we're very fortunate to have a senator from Virginia representing us who has a feel, a love, a passion, and an understanding for the Civil War. Uh, he has worked with us uh, since he's been in the Senate to help us as much as possible preserve battlefield land. We're grateful for his assistance, for his support, uh, and we want to introduce him as our very special guest today, Senator Jim Webb. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Zirkel, for an introduction, and I'd like to thank all of you who are here today uh, to be involved in this uh, important event. Todd Sedgwick, with, with whom I've worked uh, quite frequently for all the effort that he and uh, Jim Lighthizer, the president of uh, the Civil War Preservation <laughs> Trust, uh, has spent across the country, not only here, uh, in working with our staff for the, uh, the authorization of uh, these uh, different preservation programs. Um, uh, Dan Mazurko himself, uh, executive director here at the Shenandoah uh, Valley Battlefield Foundation, uh, an organization that has now spent well more than 10 years uh, working on uh, preservation of sites and raising millions of private dollars. When, when people look at uh, how these programs have been put together, we've heard over and over again today about uh, joint participation of uh, the, the, the private uh, sector, communities, and uh, uh, state-level programs, federal programs, local programs. Uh, Mr. Schickel, the chairman of the federal County Board of Supervisors, uh, thank you, sir, for your comments. Kathleen Kilpatrick, uh, thank you also for all the work that you have done, and not uh, to mention, uh, uh, or not to mention least, uh, the Huntsbury family themselves for uh, for having had the generosity and, uh, and the dedication to history of coming forward and, uh, uh, and working on this project. Uh, I'm glad to see that we do have students who have uh, spent a good bit of effort uh, over the past several months studying history uh, and learning in a place like this of uh, how history still lives and uh, in, in that regard we have a number of uh, Civil War enactors with us today. I was able to spend a good bit of time with them before we began and uh, one of them, uh, Rob Hodge, where are you Rob? Uh, he's one of the more uh, <laughs> photographed uh, Civil War reenactors in the, in the country and it turns out <laughs> Uh, my mother is a uh, Hodges, uh, and uh, uh, my great grandfather William Aza Hodges was uh, one of the one of the few members of our family in our family history who had fought for the uh, the Union Army, fought in the Kentucky Infantry uh, during the Civil War. And Rob and I were talking. We we figured out we probably had an ancestor, not a common ancestor, but we both had an ancestor who fought in the Battle of Bryce's Crossroads uh, over in, in Mississippi. So. This is the kind of thing that you see where, where history real, really still does live, and it's important to, uh, uh, to keep it alive uh, in, a, in, in ways that uh, uh, reflect our responsibility as uh, stewards of the, of the history of this country and, and to make sure that uh, the generations that are now coming of age and the generations that will be around after we're gone uh, understand uh, the struggles that the country had, how it was formed, what the divisions were, particularly during the, this particularly uh, difficult time in our history where, where so many hundreds of thousands of people died on the battlefield, uh, what went on and how it affects us even today. Um, I've been very pleased as a, uh, as a member of uh, the Senate when, in addition to the normal responsibilities that that we have in those positions, to be able to work uh, with organizations such as these organizations here today in order to, to do that, to, to preserve our history and to preserve these places where we can understand it. And today is such a day of, of celebrating a celebration and accomplishment on that front. You know, you have people, some people who will say, uh, uh, why, why should you preserve a battlefield? What, what, why is it that you want to put so much energy in preserving a place where people uh, killed each other and, and, and had such uh, uh, violent activities? What, is that, what does that show? What does that show? Are we, are we glorifying war? 
uh, we're not glorifying war. We're, we're seeking ways to understand it. Uh, I've had other, heard other people say, you can't turn war into history. History is not about wars, but there are a few places uh, where you can understand the impact of historical decisions more clearly than, than on a battlefield. Uh, and when I, uh, when I think of that particular part of coming to a battlefield, I go back to words actually that were written on the Confederate memorial in Arlington National Cemetery by a soldier who later became a minister, uh, trying to explain from his own heart what causes people to serve? And you know, I can say there's there's nothing more terrifying on the one sense, but nothing more fulfilling on the other than stepping forward uh, and uh, saying you're going to serve your country, you're going to serve your leadership. However, you're going to define that leadership. I grew up in a military family. I grew up in a family that has a long history, not of career military service, but of serving when a war comes along and many ancestors fought in this in this war in the Civil War including one ancestor who fought uh, up in one of these valley campaigns before he was wounded at Antietam and then uh, lost his life at Chancellorville and when you step forward sir you're turning literally your life over to the judgment of your leaders uh, and to the loyalties that go back generations in many cases in your own family and that is something that we need to understand uh, and much much more even than the politics that go into to wars and the inscription on the on the confederate memorial i think says that as clearly as anything that i have ever read anywhere uh, it says not for fame or reward not for place or for rank not lured by ambition, nor goaded by necessity, but in simple obedience to duty as they understood it. These men dared all, sacrificed all, and died. I don't think there's a better way to say it. And so whatever the political feelings are that go into the study of uh, any war, and particularly this one in our own country, this is a great place to come and to remember what that sort of sacrifice meant and what that sort of duty entails. Thank you very much.